you play a small sided game and every single game he was scoring three four goals yeah. did you say like we should have won this title I think in hindsight yes you could probably look at it that way best team that you played in as Spurs like I said at times it felt easy who impressed you the most when you arrived no, he wasn't a physical dominating player he was just somebody who had so much quality who are you and why are we speaking to you I'm Ben Davis, footballer for Tottenham Hotspur in Wales, and I'm a big fan of your show. <laughs> that, there you go! Hey, 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 hey. Thank you! Great introduction. What I'm fascinated is, I believe you you and Harry Kane are the same age. Yeah. Can you just tell me, when you arrive at, so then you would have arrived at Spurs... You had no and, doubt about Spurs, right? Once they, once they came in, you said, yeah, this is great. No, at the time there were a couple of clubs who were interested. I played pretty much two full seasons on the yeah. bounce in the Premier League which at 19 for a defender is it's, it's not really done that often. Mm. And there were a few clubs around, but Tottenham were the first ones that showed any real interest. And and it was a club I thought I could grow at. Um, look, I was from Swansea. It's a one-club city. The whole... You don't realise how big the other clubs are. Yeah. And moving to Tottenham, I think, was a big wake-up call for me. I was like, well, this is actually... This is proper now. We're we're like at a big club, this big fan base <laughs> in the big city. It's it was intense, but um, but yeah, it was a, it was it was the right move for me. Yeah. So you were 21 at this stage. Yes. So I'm curious because when you arrived there, because like most people know the the Harry Kane story about how he kept going on loan, scoring a Brazilian goals, the league cup, blah blah blah, and then at some point the club start, or the, the manager starts playing him regularly, and then. Yeah, or thus is born the legend of Harry Kane. Well, you when you got there, you were training with him, and he was still kind of there and not there and on loan. And would have, I assume you would have preseason with him. Mm-hmm. Did you see that honestly? Like we won't tell him. Yeah. Like did you see like oh, hey this dude should be playing all the time because no. he's really really good? It was. It was. Or did pretty, he improve? It was pretty crazy because when I arrived, there were a few times where Harry Kane maybe wasn't even in the squad for games. Uh, but what you saw in training was this. He was hungry. You could see he had just, really? he had this, well, one, he was an incredible finisher. That was the biggest thing that stands out. That's, and it's like as training, his whole career. Training, was going he, he'd get the ball and you play a small sided game and every single game he was scoring three, four goals. Yeah. Maybe his link up play wasn't there. Maybe his passing wasn't there, but he was so driven that, that when I get the ball, it's going in the net. Yeah. And you could see it over yeah. and over and over. And there were times where, the start of that season when Pochettino came in, he, he wasn't selected and he had he was coming on. And I think for Villa away, he came on, scored a free kick and never looked back, was in the team pretty much every week from then on. And he's done pretty well. When you move from a, a, a smaller club like Swansea mm-hmm. to uh, one of the biggest clubs in the Premier League, what's, what's the, the feeling when you arrive? So the first time you get into the dressing room, the training run was not... The, the one that you have no, now the, the training time ground, the training ground was just built so yeah. I went oh, straight to this yeah, yeah that's your first season right. that's right so you arrive in the training ground brand new training ground as well for those who don't know Spurs have a really really nice training ground yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's very nice <laughs> and is it like you want to make friends in that dressing room are there people who come towards you and say listen I'm, I've been here before I, I'll show you around do you feel a bit lonely do you what, how does it work I think there was definitely that nervousness feeling like I was I was just a young kid. Yeah. Looking back, I was such like I was so young. Being told you have to move up to London, you you're gonna go into this dressing room, and there's no one really there to to hold your hand through this. Yes, Once you yeah. arrive at a club like Tottenham, you're kind of you're fending for yourself because yeah. you're competing with everybody there. Um, I remember Michael Dawson, who was captain at the time. Yeah. He was he was amazing with me, and I've been very grateful to the way he helped me out. He used to. We were put in a little hotel next to the side of the motorway before I'd found a place to live. And he used to pick me up some days, drop me home. He was very helpful. And, you know, it was intense. You know, the first few times I went in, I I didn't start the first couple of games. I just moved from Swansea. I was playing every game. So I was a bit like, oh, have I, have I made a mistake? Yeah. You know, sh- should I have made this jump? Swans then went and started playing an unbelievable football again and kick, kicked on. And I was thinking, oh, if I'd have stayed a year, maybe I could have done this. But... We had to be patient. I was working with Pochettino, who was a young, exciting, up-and-coming manager as well. And I think most of that team over that first season was changing and we started to bring some more younger guys in. Yeah. And it um, it was uh, it wasn't straightforward for me because I didn't play as much as I wanted to, but I still managed to play 
28, 29 games, which looking at it, it's not too bad for you at 21 at Tottenham Hotspur. And um, and yeah, I've never really looked back. It's been it's been home for the last 10 years now. Who impressed you the most when you arrived? Because then we can talk about Garrett and all the mm-hmm. others. But was there something, the first few training sessions where you thought, okay, whoever that, I mean, I don't know yeah. him or him or them or whatever. Was there something like that? I think the one that probably stood out was Christian Eriksen. Really? It was, you know, this wasn't a... You know, he wasn't a physical dominating player. He was just somebody who had so much quality. It always seemed like he used to get the ball and have more time than everybody else. Really? And what Christian was amazing at and still is, and he's one of the best players for me, and he's like a manager on the pitch. He dictates where everybody goes, dictates the tempo of the game. If there's times where the game is getting away from us, he's the one that slows it down. He's the one that plays the ball that maybe is a bit hopeful that goes out for the throwing down there, but you know what? That's exactly what the team needed at the time to get a rest to go up yeah. the field. And that's not the stuff that's going to get applauded. The stuff that he's going to get applauded for are those free kicks, the yeah. amazing through balls, the positive. But the the ability to control all 11 around you, one of the best for me. 2015-16 season, that is the year that Leicester wins a title. Mm-hmm. And it was a year where... Should have been you. I was sure that Spurs were going to win the you. title. Is that how you viewed it from the inside? Did you say, like, we should have won this title? I think in hindsight, yes, you could probably look at it that way. But that season, it felt it was it was quite up and down. But we always felt like we were there. Yeah. But it was a season that felt like from November that okay, Leicester are doing well, but there's Don't no way they're going to keep this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And that kept going, and that kept going. I think the big loss we had where we lost to Leicester at home. Uh, they they scored from a corner set piece, and we mm-hmm. dominated them, and we lost that game and. It just opened up a little bit of a gap that I don't think we ever really got close to after that. Um, but it really was a mentality like, okay, if we keep winning, they're going to drop points at some point. But credit to Leicester that year, they somehow they went to City away and they won. They were picking up big results, and it and it was it, it was tough at the time. We, we we felt like, okay, our time's going to come, and it never did that year. And it was it was tough to look back on. I think that was a big opportunity we probably missed is that the best team that you played in as Spurs or would you say the team that you know went to the to the Champions League final for example was better or this I mean Dele was yeah I think that if you look back at it that was the best team though those consecutive years 2017-18 yeah. and probably the year we went to the Champions League final we didn't even play our best football yes. that year but the 16-17-18 were were good years we were we were a good team and like I said, at times it felt easy. It felt yeah. like we were going into games and we knew, okay, we play our football our way today, we're going to win. I was going to ask about the, just because you mentioned living in the, in the hotel next to the motorway. And one of the things you told us, I'm giving away secrets here, but obviously the Spurs training ground is sort of just north of London. Um, as you got older, you started moving more and more towards the center of London, right? You've lived in two <laughs> or three different places, right? Yep. Why is that? Could you just explain that 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 process about like how like a young footballer thinks? Because originally you think, oh, I want to be next to the training ground in the countryside and, yep. and near Jules's house. Yeah. Um, and then little by little, like not many footballers choose to live in the center of town. Yeah, yeah. So when I first moved to Tottenham, if I'm totally honest, you know, you know Tottenham's in London. I didn't know where in London it was. <laughs> it, was it was North London. I didn't know where. Enfield, where the training ground is. I didn't know where Barnet was, these places which are nearby. Right? I was from from a town called Neath. I didn't know. It was just up, <laughs> it was on, up the M4, M25, and you're there. So I think I first moved to maybe 15 minutes away from the training ground. I think that mindset is, it's the only thing that's familiar to you in this city is the training ground. That's going to be your home. Yeah, you right. spend a lot of time For there. the next season. So living... 45 minutes away would be a bit silly right if you didn't if you don't know anyone if you have no attachment to any areas then the training ground is going to be your home so why not live nearby and if you want to go into london for the day then hop on the tube or you drive in so it's easy i think the longer that i've been at spurs you you meet people i met my now wife here she lived closer to central so Happy wife, happy life, right? <laughs> you move closer to 
to people you're familiar around yeah. and you get connections with areas and I think that's but kind of do it. Do you think of yourself as like a city guy or or like when you when you first moved into your place? Yeah, right? London was pretty busy when I moved. Was it? Yeah. From, uh, that's Wales. what I mean. You, you, you that's that you mean. could stay outside mm-hmm. of it to be like a bit like oh, home, I, 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 Yeah, but I had friends who I used yeah. to live outside and they'd come up to to barnet and they'd be like wow this is too busy for me i don't know how you live here so like <laughs> like these guys you know and best of my best friends now they're just like i don't know what you're doing living did, in the city but did you have like were you the type of guy who had like the typical like what we imagine the stereotypical like young footballer crib with like the 96 inch television and like the, that's the, not the super sure stereo or what no when i'm talking about no. 22 year 21 22 yeah. 21 of course. Then, yeah. like yeah you yeah. had that, and like, did you have the PlayStation? I didn't, I didn't go over <laughs> the. I didn't go over the top, but yeah, of course, I had <laughs> yeah. the PlayStation for after training. That I used to come home and. What did you waste play? my time? Call of Duty oh, or, nice. or FIFA. Simply just that it was. There was no other games. Call of Duty used to be a, a training ground game. We'd train together. We'd go home. Everybody'd get on the headsets, and we'd all play together back in, at Tottenham. That was a good crew. <laughs> uh, and FIFA, like when when you play FIFA, mm-hmm. never really stupid question, but do you ever? play with teams that you're on no yeah no, you always... no. go, go for better players off <laughs> ah. i wouldn't switch it to wales i think gareth got us out of trouble not for the first time <laughs> the free kick away i was at the england game you yeah know. still hurts now yeah him. yeah them running down the touchline conceding the 94th minute i was shouting for him to pass the ball I instead of doing that were. turn we all were <laughs> yeah. i couldn't believe what he did that's pretty special to say that we would go into the world cup was one of the best feelings of any football <laughs> <laughs>